was still bouncing on this heel. Yeah. I can still feel myself flexing. This is absolutely crazy, dude. Yeah. Look at this type of, oh, wow. I've never seen this type of fabrication work before. Yeah. And it makes sense because the amount of detail that you put into your subs, it makes sense to see this type of curvature in your builds. Look what you've done. This is solid. Steel. Yeah, so the floor is a piece of a quarter inch thick steel plate, and then the sides are a piece of 3 16 steel plate with a steel frame, and then another 3 16 steel plate welded on the inside like a composite structure panel. The baffle is a piece of quarter inch thick steel plate, some 14 inch diameter tubes for the subs to slide through, and then another piece of quarter inch plate on the back. So the baffle's a total of four and a half inches thick. You can see that there's steel going around the whole edges. That's how you got that inner layer in here by welding this. Yep, so that's actually a really interesting thing. So what that is, is there's actually a three quarter inch long set screw up there. So it's like putting a wheel on a car. There's like studs. And then we just put the nuts on the studs. Right now we're running nine of our NDFEB2 four inch coal versions that we just came out with. They're a 4,000 watt Neo sub that we make. The box is 36 cubes tuned to 28. Look at this, even inside the box, there's a 45 <laughs> made out of steel. Then here's his big Neo motors. Oh my God, look at the beauty, sheer beauty. There's over 140 pounds of neodymium magnets in just the subs alone. I bet people love you. You're probably making red lights turn green everywhere you go, like follow that guy. And get this, there is literally so much motor force in here right now. My camera screen doesn't even know which way. Right now it's flipping back and forth. The gyroscope is getting all messed up inside there. I've been up for five days straight. We built this entire thing in the last week and a half. Look at all this welding. God, I can't believe this was done in such a short amount of time. So much work. Solid freaking steel. Just the box weighs 2,200 pounds. And there's just barely under a thousand pounds of subs. <laughs> We're also running three Crescendo 6,000 watt amps with two JY80 amp hour lithium batteries and two DC power 300 amp alternators. Can't go wrong with that, huh, you tubulus? Crawling out through the port. Here we go. Oh, wow, didn't notice that. Check that out. In the driver's side door, we got 12 silver flute, five and a quarter inch speakers. We were worried about the cones imploding with the pressure on the other side. We honestly should have started this build a little bit earlier, but we still got it done. I was just studying one of Ed Lester's videos, and he was mentioning about having your pour extend past your baffle four to six inches or so, and then having a big round over. We think it helped a lot with SPL, and then the notches are actually to fit the sub, so you couldn't actually fit the sub without having the notch. We accidentally popped the windshield at 9.30 this morning, and have been running it non-stop since. If we could close the door, I'd love to give you a demo. Hard? Yeah, real hard. There you go. Perfect. Now, before we get jamming this beast, I just want to remind those unfamiliar that these pressure levels are well above 165 decibels, and that is insane, but people still line up for hours at a time just to get 30 second taste of some of this stuff. So it's only polite to keep the demos nice and short, so that's what's gonna happen next, but to be honest, who wants to be sitting there for longer than 30 seconds while you're getting pounded in the chest with that much bass? So without further ado, Let's go ahead and hop inside this monster. Whew. Oh my God, they're beautiful subs, man. They really are. myself flexing even with all of this dude isn't bass so powerful that's insane and that's with the, the fully broken windshield like i can literally stick my finger wow in so basically we're losing a lot of pressure but we're still building it up yep that's awesome man the goal for this system was to build one of the loudest demo vehicles we could possibly do to be able to run non-stop and we've been running it since 9 30 non-stop this morning yeah so we'll keep it nice and short we got some rain coming in but dude thank you so much awesome that was fun thank you thank you 
Well, would you look at that? At least I'm not the only one with a painful looking base face, huh? Dang, that upper Reggie took no prisoners, but not everybody is looking to get as loud as they possibly can. So let's go ahead and share a quick budget banger for all those people looking for new and affordable subs. This right here is the Incriminator i-Series 12, 150 bucks, 500 watts, conservatively rated, and still plenty of stroke. I currently have just a small ported box in the trunk of my Toyota, 1.8 cubic feet, six inch aeroport, tuned to around 39 hertz. And this sub does great, handles overrated power, plays deeper than I thought it would, and still puts up good SPL numbers. 42.1 at 554 watts. <laughs> Not too shabby. So if you're looking for an affordable sub with good cooling and solid parts, Showtime Electronics is hooking it up. Over on the website, every single V1 is discounted down to like 80 bucks right now. That is awesome to see. So I want to say a big thank you to Showtime for pulling strings for EXO, the new guy over here. And shout out to Incriminator Audio for remembering us budget ballers. Follow the links for more info. Now let's get back to the good old car show. Hey, that rhyme. The suction cups. Yes, it did. Both of them fell off. Yeah, we got new ones. Jeff Bro, you get five minutes to recharge because right. of the sensor failure. You got five minutes starting now. So, Mr. Reason has a little bit of an issue with his windshield not holding my suction cups because his windshield is well destroyed. We have taped the sensor in place. Then the sensor falls again. It'll go back to his original qualifying score. Jethro is aware of it. Jethro is an old time competitor. By the way, nice to see you back in the lanes. Without further ado, Jethro, are you ready? He's ready. Watch the screen. Here we go. All right, happens. I am sorry for that to have happened, Jethro. Everybody give this man a round of applause. He put on one hell of a show. What's number, brother? It's the name of the game right there. You never know what'll happen. That's true. You never know. That's what he said. <laughs> Bummer, huh? Wicked good sportsmanship, though. Pretty much all smiles, and we can definitely feel for this guy. Getting so dang excited, then realizing something went wrong. Man, but to be honest, that's the name of the game. You never know what's going to happen when you're in the lane. So hats off to this guy for having a good attitude, pushing forward with a smile. That's really what it's all about, huh? At 160 decibels plus, something is bound to go wrong sooner or later, believe me. So it is pretty good to see good sportsmanship in the lanes back over at Spring Break Nationals. Man, what a great throwback show. We guys still got some clips to show you guys from Spring Break, man. If you don't know, that's actually a show that is no longer with us, but it's with us in 
memory, so we're going to keep uploading some more for you guys. And if you're interested to see more of the iSeries 12 from earlier, be sure to comment below with the words BUDGET BANGER in all caps. And if we get enough traction, I'll be sure to pull up a full lengther just for you guys of that sub. It's pretty damn sweet, and I'm glad to have it. So until the next video, this is EXO signing out with another dynamic bass duo. All right, guys, I will talk to you in the next one. Ah, thank you for watching. Hush, yeah, 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 ye